Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back here at Young and Investing. For those who are new here, my name is Quinton and on my YouTube channel you can find all kinds of cryptocurrency content such as cryptocurrency news, reviews, my own portfolio, tutorials and more. If that sounds interesting to you, I would say please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button down below. Alright, in this video we are going to talk about Chainlink and its meme of a $1000 per link token. Is that possible or not? That is what we're going to talk about in this video. And of course, we're also going to talk about what Chainlink is and what it is doing and how fast it is growing, etc. So without further ado, let's get started. And first, let's have a look here at CoinGecko to see some numbers of Chainlink and its link token. We can see that it's ranked eight. So it's the eight biggest cryptocurrency in the world. And one link token is currently just under $9 per token. That gives it a market cap of $3.4 billion with a circling supply of nearly 390 million out of a total supply of 1 billion. So what else is very important to point out is that Chainlink had its all time high at $20 per link token. That was two months ago. So that means that currently it is down 56% from that all time high. But if we have a look to the, um, the chart of Chainlink, we can see that it's basically in a bull market since the early beginnings. It didn't even have a bear market like the rest of the market. The rest of the market went down a lot in 2018 and Chainlink just kept on growing. Chainlink didn't really have any effect from the bear market. And after that, it kept on growing even more into 2019 and 2020. And as you can see here, it reached its all time high. And right now we're back at this point right here. Something else that is very important is the market cap dominance, especially because at the end of the video, we're going to do some calculations and it's important to know that currently Chainlink has a market cap dominance of 1%. That means that the total market cap of all cryptocurrencies combined, you can see that right here, is $340 billion and Chainlink is $3.4 billion, so that is 1%. At its all-time high, Chainlink had a market cap dominance of around 2% of the total market. So keep that in mind, especially at the end of the video when we're going to do some calculations. So now let's talk about what Chainlink is doing and why it is so special. So basically, Chainlink is translating off-chain data to on-chain data. There is a technological problem why off-chain data, so produced off the blockchain, cannot enter a blockchain or a smart contract. There is like a technological problem there. And that's what it's called the Oracle problem. And Chainlink offers a decentralized Oracle network that you can call it like that, just translates that data to blockchain language. You can see that right here. So off-chain data that is produced off-chain and some examples here are uh, the temperature, um, price feeds, uh, or satellite information, whatever it is, data can be anything. Well, it translates that and it puts that on a blockchain. So connect to any source of data feed API, and then it translates that to public private blockchains that can support Chainlink. We see Hyperledger, Bitcoin, Ethereum right here. And also it can send automatically payments anywhere connect to backend systems. So basically Chainlink sends this information to the blockchain and more in particular smart contracts and can make it like execute very easily because of that. So that is what Chainlink is doing uh, very easily explained, but you can already see that it's huge because of Chainlink right now, blockchain technology will finally be usable for like mainstream adoption. So for big enterprises, for governments, etc. They produce a lot of data off chain and they want to put that on chain and for that they need Chainlink. So basically if blockchain will become big in the coming years, I am convinced personally that Chainlink will have something to do with that. So 
that is huge of course especially because chainlink is blockchain agnostic so it can work on any blockchain it is built on ethereum it is an erc20 as well as an erc677 uh, token but um, it can work on any blockchain and it is already integrated in a lot of blockchains and chainlink right now has three different products and i did a tweet about that so if you're not following me on twitter yet there is a link in the description down below i would say please go follow me there if you want to so right now chainlink has three products the first product was verifiable decentralized price feeds so basically it took from different sources all kinds of price feed then they made like an aggregation of that and that is what they sent to certain smart contracts to make sure that if one point in that network fails that still a good price will be given to smart contracts otherwise this can be like disastrous but we're not going into detail about that then it also had like proof of randomness as its second product and then very recently chainlink launched its third product which is proof of reserve and with that product alone in just a few few weeks of time it is already protecting over 1.3 billion dollars in bitcoin that is tokenized on ethereum so they are doing that for bitgo and for ren so this shows us how much chainlink is actually needed and how much potential there is in all kinds of stuff where decentralized oracle network can be used so anything that has to do with data um, chainlink can do it i mean that is huge so we're just getting started with this, but you can see like immediately every time they launch a new product, um, immediately they get several partnerships and several companies um, working with it immediately. So if we have a look to the Chainlink ecosystem, this is how it looks like. So in just just over one year of time, so basically the, um, the mainnet was launched, uh, I think the last day of May or the first day of June of 2019. So just over a year ago, uh, the mainnet of Chainlink got launched and already 300 integrations followed after that. So 300 integrations of which 72 blockchains. I'm not going over it, but you can see it yourself, um, like the biggest blockchains in the world, uh, like Ethereum, but also Tezos, Polkadot, Ethereum Classic, Zilliqa, you just named them. It it already integrated Chainlink. But in total, 293. I mean, I'm just going to scroll down here um, and you just check it out yourself if you want to. But um, there are like big companies um, between this, um, such as like Google, uh, Google Cloud, as well as Intel that they're working with, as well as Swift. They're also working with uh, that company. Um, and of course, a lot of companies within crypto as well. And Intel, you can see also right here. So huge. 293 nearly 300 in just over a year of mainnet and it's going faster and faster this is the fastest growing crypto ecosystem ever so uh, that already tells you a lot right so the next thing i want to show you is this so chainlink not only has like integrations in individual companies so that they integrated the chainlink decentralized oracle network but they're also part of some very promising organizations one of them is the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And um, we're not going into detail of this, but I'm just going to name some companies who are also part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. And that is um, Cisco, Hyperledger, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan, ING, UBS, Deloitte, uh, Santander, Microsoft, Intel, BP, AMD, and 178 others are part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Then they're also part of the baseline protocol and some of the members of the baseline protocol are Ernst & Young or EY as it's called right now, Microsoft AMD Consensus. Then they're also part of Hyperledger Avalon and that is with IBM, Santander, Oracle that is going to integrate something with Chainlink in Q3. So that's going to happen normally any day now, that announcement, but they already announced that they're going to do that in Q3. So something with Oracle is coming. Microsoft again, Intel again, Alibaba Cloud. And then they're also part of the Interwork Alliance together with Nasdaq, IBM, Accenture, Microsoft, and many, many more. So this only shows you how big Chainlink is and the connections they make with with all of these big massive companies um i mean this can only lead to like integrations and partnerships etc i think in the future so all of these things are so important for chainlink's development 
over the next several years. Then the next thing I want to talk about is the link token because a lot of people say like, yeah, okay, but why do you need like a link token? Well, I'm going to show you this right here. So the link token is used as payment and collateral to maintain the network security and incentives of the overall network. The token will be used for paying node operators for delivering off-chain data to smart contracts and node operators use link as collateral, so stake, when required by contract creators in order to ensure they will have they will behave correctly. Malicious or non-responsive nodes will have their collateral slashed and reduced reputation as a punishment. Another big use case is security. So Chainlink or the link token at least is a layer two security on top of Ethereum. So Ethereum is layer one security, Chainlink is layer two. So then why not use Ethereum? That's also a question some people often um, ask. So there are several reasons to use link over ETH. So it ties the incentives of node operators together with the health of the overall Chainlink network isolates the security and economic bandwidth stake link from external factors outside the control of chainlink stakeholders if a major network attack occurred link collateral can then becomes worthless hurting the attacker this is not true with the unrelated assets so imagine eat is the main token of chainlink when a hack happens um then the hacker will like not fail because like this ETH token that will be in the middle of the Chainlink ecosystem um, that will not be worthless because Ethereum is so much more than Chainlink at that point. But of course, if you have like an own token, the link token that only uh, functions within the Chainlink ecosystem. So let's imagine like um, a hacker takes over this entire network, then the link token will of course become worthless, hurting the attacker and then he will be uh, left empty-handed, you know, so that's a very important reason stable coins wouldn't work either as they are either backed by fiat and thus censorable or rely, rely upon oracles to function Growing demand for link combined with a shrinking supply due to staking creates a positive feedback loop where the increased adoption boosts the price of link thus increasing economic bandwidth and enabling more adoption to be supported and Chainlink is blockchain agnostic and needs a token that can be very easily bridged between different blockchains. Now let's go to the last part of the video and that is discussing the $1,000 per link token meme. And for that, I want to show you this right here. I have already used this in my previous Chainlink video um, and this is basically Ethereum. So the first years of Ethereum. So from a technical perspective, Chainlink is going hand in hand with the first years of Ethereum. So it's, it's basically a copy of that. You can see that right here. The only difference is that you need to do the price of Ethereum divided by three. Why is this? Well, basically, um, so far, it has shown that you need to do the price divided by three. But it makes a lot of sense as well, because Ethereum has more or less three times the amount of tokens that Chainlink has. So it makes sense as well. So basically everything you can see here um, in terms of technicals, um, well, they have the same market cap on every moment so far. So all the different stages are very similar and they have the same market cap in every single stage. So where were we when I last talked about this graph? Well, we were basically close to the all time high and back then, I said to you guys that I thought Chainlink would cool, cool down for a while and that it would have a correction. Well, the correction went a little deeper than I expected, but the correction happened. Same happened here with Ethereum back in the beginning of 2017. After that, after its consolidation, after its correction, it went up even more, went into like a new range. This is very important. If the similarities of Chainlink and uh, Ethereum are going to continue in the next several years, well, then this is probably going to happen. And then my prediction for Chainlink would be around $500 per link token. Why is this? Well, Ethereum had its stop at around $1,500, a little under $1,500. So divided by three, that is around $500, maybe a little less. But to be very honest, I'm not going to wait for that price, not at all. Um, of course, it's always good to take some profits in between as well. But personally, I think the price of Chainlink will end between like 
$300 and $400. Why? Because that would make sense if you compare it to previous cycles and where I think Chainlink will be at that very moment. It could top out a little higher, but I'm not going to wait for these prices of $500, for example. We know that Chainlink currently has around, let's say, 400 million tokens in circulation. If we have like um, a price of $400 per link token, and if the circulating supply would still be 400 million that would mean that Chainlink would have a market cap of 160 billion dollars that is not impossible in my opinion if you compare it to for example xrp previous cycle so that's even a cycle less so previous cycle the top of the market cap for xrp for example was over 100 billion dollars and they basically had nothing Chainlink is a real thing Chainlink has an amazing ecosystem we will be like one cycle further so to think that Chainlink will have a market cap Cap of around 160 billion dollars I think that's reasonable I think that's probably going to happen but of course you never know but I think that's very very reasonable especially if you think that normally um, the crypto market will have a market cap of several trillion dollars but if we do that for one thousand dollar per link token that's of course a different story because that would mean that Chainlink would have a market cap of 400 billion dollars and 400 billion dollars for that it really needs to gain like a lot of market dominance uh, from here on so let's say that the total market cap of the crypto market will be 5 trillion for Chainlink to get like a market cap of 400 billion dollars which would mean $1,000 per link token it really needs to have like a market dominance of 8% which is currently 1% I think this market dominance will go up because the market dominance of Bitcoin will go down but Chainlink is already big and there will be some players who like um, outperform Chainlink as well so it will be hard in my opinion to get like a market uh, dominance of 8% for Chainlink. I think that's a lot. So basically, I think for now it will stay a meme $1,000 per link token on the very long term. So maybe next cycle, that's possible. I mean, like data and blockchain will be a multi trillion dollar industry very likely in a few years. But I don't think it's going to happen this cycle because it needs to go very hard for that to happen for Chainlink. So a market dominance of 8% seems very unlikely to me. Um, a few percentage points is possible, like 4%, and then we already have like a very nice market cap, right? So that's what I think will happen. Of course, you never know in the crypto market. And I would like to ask you guys, what do you think the chaining price will be at the end of this cycle? Please let me know in the comment section down below. All right, that was it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down below to stay updated with all the latest cryptocurrency news, reviews, my own portfolio, and more. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.